Did you know there's a pedestrian in GTA San Andreas voiced by Franklin's voice actor in GTA 5? The voice actor for CJ and Franklin are actually cousins in real life. CJ and Franklin up in this motherfucking real life What you might not have known is that there's a Grove Street family member in San Andreas who's voiced by Sean Fontino. Hey, hey dog, what's up? What's cracking? Your boy Death for something. Yeah, this what's happening, man? Hot Coffee refers to a controversial minigame hidden within GTA San Andreas that allowed players to engage in explicit activities with a girlfriend character. When players found out about the code and enabled it, this led to outrage from various groups, including media watchdog organizations. As a result of the controversy, the Entertainment Software Rating Board changed the rating of the game from M to AO, or adults only. The Trade Commission to investigate the video game Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Later versions of the game had the content completely removed. The Blue Hell is a phenomenon that occurs when a player falls or glitches through the game's map, often resulting in the player character falling into a seemingly endless void of blue space beneath the game world. In the GTA series, interiors are stored under the map. When a player walks into a marker to enter a building, they're then teleported to the coordinates of this interior underneath the world. While falling into the blue hell, a range of glitches and exploits can be found. It's also been used by players for various purposes, such as accessing hidden areas or skipping parts of the game. The Lil Probe Inn is a tongue-in-cheek name for a restaurant situated near Area 53, Rockstar's take on Area 51, and inside of the building you can find tons of photographs that seem to depict UFOs and alien technology. What's perhaps more interesting to the greater myth hunting community is the map that can be found within the back room, which seems to display coordinates or locations that some claim are UFO sighting locations. And it's actually a beta map. This island looks to be Rockstar's take on Alcatraz. There are some unexplained disturbing phone calls players have claimed to receive while wandering the desert at night and some players claim this can only happen within close proximity of El Diablo. Translated, that means the devil. The ghost cars are one of the most popular secrets within the game. These vehicles spawn creepily within the woodlands of San Andreas, and they're always damaged beyond repair. Sometimes you may even see these vehicles freshly rolling down the hill as if they've just been abandoned. Nobody really knows the origin of these vehicles, but one creepy fact about them is that if you take them to a pay and spray shop, you won't be able to repair them. Some players have speculated that this has something to do with the Bigfoot mystery, so let's talk about that. Well, one Rockstar Games developer who worked on the game certainly stirred up the pot by admitting that something was indeed out there in the woods and it hadn't been discovered yet. Not to mention the subtle clues that players have picked up on, such as the fact that there is an area on the map which when inspected closely resembles that of a Bigfoot footprint. Then, one day in 2006, a video was posted to YouTube showing a question mark icon within the woods of the game, sparking this myth even further. The question mark was rumoured to start a secret Bigfoot mission where CJ would then have to fight Bigfoot and kill him. But, of course, this was all just mods. But that doesn't take away from the fact that many of us spent hours in the woods on this game, looking for something. There's another really strange phenomenon in the game where you can sometimes come across pedestrians that are... Players claim that they've seen pedestrians falling out of the sky, jumping off of buildings, and most famously, you can find a pedestrian who's taking pictures, who decides to just walk into the water and drown. There is a billboard hidden in Los Santos that reads True Grime, which is Rockstar poking fun at another crime game set in Los Angeles called True Crime. The WCTR talk radio is actually a parody of a famous radio station which was hosted by Art Bell. One of the most famous phone calls from the Art Bell radio station was someone claiming that they worked at Area 51, and mysteriously, while this individual was claiming some rather shocking things, the entire radio station got knocked off the air. Hi, um, I, I, I don't have a whole lot of uh, time. Um, okay, what, what we're thinking of as, as aliens are there, uh, they're, they're extra-dimensional beings that 
an earlier precursor of the space program made contact with. I'm sorry, the, the government knows about them. And there's a lot of safe areas in this world that they could begin moving the population to now, Art. <laughs> I, I started getting... We are now on a backup system, everybody. And the entire transmitting system by satellite went down here, and we were notified we were off the air. And some sort of uh, massive transmit failure. So we are now using a backup system to be on the air. You're probably quite freaked out after hearing that, so let's talk about something a little more light-hearted. When CJ stands AFK, sometimes you can actually hear him singing songs that are found within the game. Some of the results are really funny. Young never gonna get it, never gonna get it. move your body, move your body. Express yourself, cause I'm from Grove Street. The Ghost Planes is another phenomenon where planes can randomly crash in the game, sometimes causing CJ to actually get caught as collateral damage. According to a Rockstar developer who worked on the game, he created a code that would have planes spawning near the player in order to make the world feel more alive. However, the planes only scan a small section in front of them, meaning sometimes tall, thin objects are missed and the planes end up crashing into them. If you go into Zero's RC shop, you can find action figures on the shelves which reference previous Rockstar games. You have action figures for Manhunt and Vice City, as well as a slot here that looks like it's for Vice City trading cards. There's also a building in San Fierro which is called Zombotech, which has a sign on it saying Zombie Research Facility. What's more interesting about this is that there's a sign that indicates that there may be an underground bunker, perhaps where they do the work on these so-called zombies. But of course the elevator does not work. There's a feature in GTA San Andreas where you can actually go into debt. The main way to do this is by going into debt with one of the casinos in Los Venturas. Your money will turn red and show as negative, and you'll also get a phone call from debt collectors saying to watch your back. Hey Mr. Johnson, just a friendly reminder that you owe me money. Don't be a stranger. Then the game will actually send debt collectors after you that try and kill you. The only way to stop this from happening is to get back into the positive figures. There are a wide range of beta weapons cut from the game, as well as houses and pedestrians. Some of the beta weapons include these submachine guns that look a lot more like Vice City. There's also a baseball bat with nails in it. In one of the reveal trailers for the game, we see this house here with an interior and furniture, not present in the final game. But with mods, we can add this back to the game and see what it would have looked like. Also, the original Grove Street was supposed to be orange. It's not certain why this was cut from the game, but we know that the beta skins for the Grove Street families was also completely different. The Microsoft Store copy of GTA San Andreas hosts a wide range of really unusual glitches. From graphical errors to completely crazy events, this version of the game sold on the Microsoft Store was completely broken. This is probably the most unstable build of the game to play, and had a glitch where you could beat the game in a matter of minutes. One of CJ's girlfriends, Catalina, has a cabin in the woods. But what's really unusual about this cabin is you can find bullet holes in the glass, and also three separate graves accompanied by a shovel. Many speculate that this is her previous lovers, and Carl almost made the fourth victim. Baby, please, no. Please, baby, no. Ow! Hey! Ooh! Ow! You've probably heard about the mass grave out in the desert near Area 53. This is one of the most disturbing easter eggs in the entire game, likely referencing the Mafia and ways that they would dispose of their victims back in the 80s and 90s. But there's one pedestrian in particular players believe is the man responsible. This right here is what many players would consider as the serial killer of San Andreas. This guy is rather freaky and can be found around the desert town surrounding this grave. Many players are unaware that there are in fact sharks in San Andreas. For many years this was considered to be a myth and just a mod added to the game. However, there is a file within the game which has a shark model. 
and a very renowned myth hunter on YouTube actually managed to find a shark spawning in the world. It took him 16 in-game days before the shark finally spawned. Talk about dedication just looking for the thing. Mike Torino is one of the most interesting characters in the entire game. He's of course an undercover agent, but we don't really know what government agency he works for. Probably the CIA. But Mike Torino also has some rather interesting things to say about history. It's amazing. What's up now, Torino? This history, it's all lies. It says Hitler killed himself, and then we nuked Japan. And people believe this shit. Jesus. Well, it makes them sleep better at night, I guess. Leatherface is probably one of the longest standing myths in San Andreas. There's a pedestrian under the name of CYMYHB1, or Hillbilly1. This guy has an incredibly creepy look to him, and is the character that many players say is the one responsible for the Leatherface myth. The myth goes as follows, if you explore the woodlands in the game, you can sometimes come across this ped holding a chainsaw that chases the player. There are some really freaky cabins hidden in the game with bloodstains all over the floor, and sometimes this pedestrian can be seen wandering around these derelict areas. What makes this even more interesting is this all takes place in a lumber yard, exactly where a chainsaw would be expected to be. In the countryside area of the game, you can actually find a bin with the map of Vice City hidden inside of it. What's interesting is that this is actually the beta version of the map, and nobody's really sure why it's here, but of course Rockstar just put it in there just for the jokes of it. There's a pedestrian that can be found wandering around that shares very close similarities to Kirk Bain. As you can see, this pedestrian has very similar features to that of Kirk Bain's appearance on the MTV Unplugged session. It's also speculated that a Nirvana single was supposed to feature on the in-game radio, but never made it to the final game. There is a rusty wheelchair abandoned on a small pier in the middle of the countryside, and nobody seems to know why it's here. What makes this even more interesting is that the textures are a little bit messed up. Not only that, but if you decide to climb on the chair while you have frame limiter turned off, CJ will die a mysterious death. The Wayfarer bug is a bug which references the glitch that occurs when a pedestrian gets on the back of your motorcycle. The Wayfarer is a type of motorcycle that can be found in the game, and the minute you have a passenger on the back, their face gets completely messed up in some really disturbing ways. There's something about this model of vehicle which seems to distort, but only certain models in the game have this really freaky bug. You can find this really creepy abandoned bio well, and when you get close to it at night time, you can see a green glow emitting out from inside of it. This bio well is situated rather close to a variety of factories, but some players have linked this to another very strange bug. During the night time at around 5am, if you head to certain areas of the countryside while it's foggy weather, you will see a very strange graphical glitch which makes the entire area glow a bright fluorescent green which looks very similar to that of a biohazard waste. There's an unused warehouse interior that nobody seems to know exactly what it's for. This can be primarily found during the DYOM mod, which is a mod which allows you to create your own missions, or do your own mission. This warehouse is really creepy, and it looks similar to those warehouses that Tenpenny sends you on earlier on in the game. The original Pier 69 mission where you kill Ryder was going to be completely different. Instead of Ryder jumping off of the barrier and getting into a boat and fleeing away, the original version of the game was actually supposed to be Ryder being killed up against the bars and T-Bone Mendez being the one that escapes on a boat. Another myth similar to Leatherface now, and we're going to discuss the character of Pigsy. Pigsy is a character from a previous Rockstar title named Manhunt. <laughs> it's a deranged and cannibalistic mass murderer who wears a skinned pig's head over his face while viciously slaughtering his victims with a chainsaw, appearing to be an obese, naked, middle-aged man. He is also completely inhuman in behaviour, and has lost all connection with reality. Some players claim the Rockstar Games did a crossover, and Pigsy can be found in some of the countryside areas of San Andreas. When you find Pigsy, he will chase after you and won't stop until you are finally slain. What makes this even more creepy is no matter how far away you get from him, 
Whenever you look away, he always seems to be able to be closer and closer to you until he corners you and manages to take you. The Headless CJ glitch is a famous glitch which occurred on the PlayStation 2 copy of the game when playing the two-player mode. Players were able to go into the two-player mode, grab a katana, and cut CJ's head off. However, when the mission then failed and was returned to single player, CJ would be left there standing without his head, but still fully functional and still able to play, walk around and resume the game, which of course resulted in some very funny videos. If you look up into the stars in the night sky, you can find a constellation of stars which is in the shape of the Rockstar Games logo. One of the most common myths is that Carl Johnson's house is actually haunted, and this theory does hold some ground to it, because of course CJ's mother was shot and killed in the entrance to the home. We've never actually seen what she looks like officially, but there are pictures found around the family home that give you an idea of what she might have looked like. On top of this, players have said while walking around the Johnson household, they've heard noises and strange breathing. Of course, nothing has been found within the game files that would indicate this to be the truth, but that didn't stop people from experimenting and myth hunting to see what they could find. If you're a GTA fan, then of course you're excited for GTA 6, which is why I want to tell you about my custom t-shirt design I've had made for me. As you can see, the artwork is very similar to something you would see for GTA 6. It's not affiliated with Rockstar Games, nor is it an official GTA 6 artwork. But you can pick this up right now with shipping completely free. And I think you'll agree that the artwork is really, really cool. I'll leave the link in the description below if you want to pick one of these up. And thank you for watching today's video. This has been the San Andreas Iceberg condensed down to a short video.